Hi everyone, John Aldridge here. Baldo meets the podcast in conjunction with Hotel Anfield. Along this year, we're going to be joined by some fantastic uh, personalities to do with Liverpool Football Club and beyond. And, you know, we will see what happens. I'd like to thank all the sponsors, and this is very important, because uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, Budweiser Brewery, Bell Lamb, Joyce and Solicitors, Liverpool Connect, Airport Transfers, Olympic Scaffold uh, and Tower Eye, Kingdom Plumbing, Northwest Fencing, Onyx Real Estate, Dortmunder Brewery, and it's all in support of Zoe's Place and the Owen McVay Foundation. So thanks very much to all of them. Hello everyone, John Aldridge here with episode four of Aldo Meets in conjunction with the Hotel Anfield. I'm here with my mate, James Pierce. Works for the, uh, what is it again you work for? The Athletic. <laughs> Give it a plug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Athletic. The Athletic. Yeah, yeah. And Peter Beckenbauer, <laughs> who's the hotel owner, who's a great fella. Still can't say his second name. <laughs> Over the coming season, we're going to be, well, we're going to have some some fantastic guests from, from Liverpool. Got Liverpool players gone by and, and, and maybe some present players, along with some great supporters, notorious supporters we've got in the world. Uh, and today, it's my pleasure to welcome... Lucas Lever, who for 10 years was was brilliant for Liverpool under Rafa Benitez. Very, very hard when he first came, as you'd expect, coming from Brazil. Uh, but what a stalwart he was for this magnificent club. Welcome, mate. Thank Welcome. you. It's great to see you again. Very good to see, see you. Again. And uh, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to be back and pleasure to to be on this podcast. When, when was the last time you come back? Was it about six years ago? Yeah, well, since uh, the day I left, uh, it's the first time I'm really back. So, awesome. yeah, unfortunately, I with COVID and of uh, course yeah. I was still playing. I didn't have a chance to be back. So it's a great time to be back, you know, see so many, still some, some friends, you know, yeah. at the club and at the city. So I'm looking forward to... To watch the game as well. Who, who, who's, who would you know who's in the, the setup at the moment? Oh, in the team, of course, uh, Trent and Gomez, Matip, um, who else? Um, Alisson wasn't here yeah. when I was, but I know him for, uh, from from Brazil. Um, well, James, can you help that's, me? That's probably it. There's been a big, turn, yeah, big turnover the big last change, couple of years. And all the staff, yeah, you know, yeah, Jurgen's yeah. staff, and even at AXA before it was Melwood. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I went there and saw a lot of people. So now it was great to see some some old old friends. Will you will you get to see some after the game today? Yeah, I hope so. Make some I hope plans. So. Yeah, I'll probably see them after the game yeah. in the lounge and then. A lot of them are, are off because of international break. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, no, I'll have time to to at least say hello. And you, and you've been back to your, your old club in the week, I see. Yeah, I went back to to Rome to to watch a game as well at uh, the Olympico Stadium to watch Lazio in the Champions League. So yeah, I I took this time to visit friends and and going as a retired man now. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just go a little bit more relaxed and enjoy a bit more when you are playing, to be honest, because you, you don't have that pressure. Absolutely. So you just can support the team and, and, and have a great time. And have a few beers as well, mate, in the process. Yeah, I prefer red wine, you know that. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> oh, <red> wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's great to have you back, mate. You know, uh, I'm sure you'll have a great day. And it's not as if you can just jump on easy jet and go to Portugal two and a half hours. You've got to come from Brazil. It's, yeah. It's a nightmare. You've got to go to Germany to come back or whichever way. So I know how difficult it is. So when I was at Real Sociedad, it was, it was the same. It took a, a day to get there and it's only in northern Spain. Yeah. So it, you, it's, you, nah. you're welcome. You're welcome back, pal. You're welcome back. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, it's been, been eight months since you retired. How, how, have, you, how yeah. have you found kind of adjusting to this new chapter in your life? Well, to be honest, James, it's, it came by surprise. So, um, of course, I, I was still under contract until the end of this year. Mm -hmm. So it was tough, you know, when I found out the problem. But uh, the last eight months, I'm kind of uh, accepting and, and moving on because life is it is what it is you have to accept and move on and just uh, taking my time to decide what uh, what will come next 
So when you when you went back for preseason training, I think it was last December, wasn't it? And you went, yeah. went underwent the testing. Yeah. Um. So it was it was like a scan, wasn't it, that showed up like a, some scarring. Yeah. On we 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 finished the season in November uh, last year, and then December we got back to for preseason to start the the, the, the new season end of January and doing all the screening, all the tests that we we all do every year. They found a scar, which um, they they were not sure why was there and why which reason was there so i had to wait uh, about three months to redo all the these scans again and and then it just confirmed that you know it was a, a quite big scar so it, it wouldn't allow me to to play football anymore and do some high intensity sessions so i had to officially retire in march uh, which uh, was sad but like i said you just have to move on and i can do pretty much everything apart from of course doing some uh, intensity high intense uh, training sessions yeah it was obviously i remember it was a very emotional <clears throat> press conference that you yeah. gave i mean that because i know you obviously you know that age you you would have known you only had maybe a couple of years yeah. left at the highest level but it must have been hard for that decision to be taken away from you in a way yeah of course it wasn't more i wasn't expecting that and um i had a a plan you know to play still a couple of years you know at my former club is where i wanted to to retire it and and we i decided to go back and and, and grammy was in the second division of brazil so it was a a dangerous move i would say you know but you know i managed to to help the team as well to get back to the first division again and so this year in my my head i would uh, enjoy you know playing you know in all the stadiums maybe in brazil that i didn't play when i was there when i was younger because i moved so so young and you know have a great time and um but it wasn't the case so it was emotional because i didn't have the choice mm. but uh you have to move on like i said you know life is uh, there are more more things to do apart from football, and that's what I'm trying to to do now. Enjoying my time as well with friends, family, and and doing these things, which which I really appreciate. It's it's hard. Well, I was I went like from football to to player manager, the manager. When you when you come out of that fray and used to it for so for so long, we spoke about this before, haven't we? You know, so you've been in football for say 20, 15 years, and you come out of of, of the dressing room area. Yeah. Away from them, where every day you go and you're having a laugh, you're having the banter, yeah. it's all to great fun. That is that's difficult to to balance out, yeah. you know, for, for from metal point of view, isn't it? Yeah, first the routine that we have as a player, you know, yeah. is just like you know schedule and times and training and trips and games and and then you come out, uh, you realize how good and how nice it is to be a football player. Absolutely, and yeah. sometimes. Players, when we are in the, you know, in, I say that bubble, you know, yeah. like yeah. we don't realize how how good it is, yeah. you know. Sometimes, of course, I always knew I, it's my passion, football, and always uh, been my passion to play and training. And uh, but then when you come out from that, uh, you appreciate even more, you know, yeah. the time you had to being a football. Did, 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 you, did you find it hard, or did you gradually get used to it? I found it really hard because the routine, you know, mm. like I said, uh, from one day to the, the other day, you just uh, have no routine really. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what do I do now? You know, <laughs> like you wake up and do the dishes. You know, you take, you take the kids to school yeah. and, you know, but it's not enough. Yeah, you no, know? that's right. Yeah. So starting to adapt in the yeah. new way of, of living, yeah. you know, but, you know, uh, the first month it was, it was yeah, like... My wife wasn't happy because I was too much at home. You're on the feet, <laughs> you know. You're like, oh, you're controlling me, and this is not normal, normal, you know. Yeah, but, but everything is okay now. <laughs> but it must be nice to spend much more time with your kids now. And I believe Pedro wants to become a footballer mm -hmm. as well. So you yeah. will help manage to help him a little bit on that journey. Yeah, of course, uh, having more time and just doing the simple things, you know, take to the school, pick up from school taking to training sessions or my daughter to the dance gymnastic or whatever uh, she has on the on the week and of course Pedro his dream is to be a football player so having the time as well to go and watching his training sessions and 
you know, being able to watch his games, uh, I think it's a, it's a big help and mm. a very, it's a pleasure for me as well because, uh, you know, I can, I can share moments with him mm. that uh, maybe when I was playing, I, w I wouldn't be able to. Mm. And um, I, I heard you say um, you've got your UEFA B license, but I heard you say that you might not or not yet go into management, but your passion is helping young yeah. Brazilian talent to potentially make it onto the top stage. Um, yeah. Uh, how do you see that working? I've done the, the UEFA B license when I was still at the club at Liverpool, you know, um, On these days, I don't see much of me on on a coaching uh, base because I don't know. It's still that uh, something that I I don't see me there. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't know in a couple of years yeah. or you know it might switch and mm -hmm. and 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 I miss the maybe maybe I miss the pitch and working with players. I like to I would like to help young players, especially in Brazil. You know, you see so much talent mm -hmm. uh, in Brazil, and but sometimes it's just kind of a, they need a, a direction. They need yeah. a, you know uh, someone to really guide them. You know, so it's something that I'm I'm thinking maybe an agent could mm -hmm. be a, an idea because you know I think it could uh, could help these guys. You know, just to don't get lost on the process because we see so many talent, but losing their heads on the way and and it's something I would like to do as well. And if you compare the Brazilian setup of of, of how they guide the talent, if there is uh, much of that in terms of the process and the guidance to the to the English uh, one, I mean, you see the academy system here and how they like take yeah. the players through. Um, what's the comparison? Is it as structured in Brazil as it is in, in England? Of course, the Brazil structure, it, it improves a lot. Mm. I have to say that, you know, all the big clubs now have a, a very good setup You know, but Brazil, unfortunately, is a poor country. Um, so we start not with the structure of the club, but the education. Yeah. So if if you lack of education, sometimes you probably will lack of a, of a mentality and, 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 and a process that they need to respect that. So that's why I think um, Brazil have so much talent and you can see it every day, but so many of them just uh, get lost on the yeah, on the yeah, way, you know. Yeah. And in yeah. Europe, uh, you know, all the clubs here, they just have a bit more patience. Brazil, they just need to get into the first team, 18, 17, even 16 now, you know, because the clubs need to sell, you know. They, so it, it's a different way of seeing football because European teams they probably get to be a fantastic player for the future for many years mm. it was my case I came here stayed for 10 years and then I left so Brazil is do a couple of years do well because all the dream the dreams from the players as well is to come to Europe to play yeah, yeah. Yeah. One thing when we were preparing the podcast, Lucas, that we wondered uh, was obviously when the, the bad news, when you did your press conference said you are leaving, you must have been inundated with messages from former teammates and yeah. managers. Because the one thing you're really known for as well in the Liverpool, and we touched on that uh, previously briefly, is that you were bringing the players together. You you f you think yeah. that uh, the team spirit and spending quality time, um, poker nights are here, yeah. different things in your house. <laughs> um, you have to tell us a bit more about that. That really made a big difference to the team. So you must have been inundated But with that, messages. That's important in every dressing room. You know, you look at what Henderson and, and Milner did. You know, going back to to you know Lucas's time. You know, Stevie G and You know, Carra, yeah. you know, the, you've got to have the, the banter, you know, the, yeah. the laughs, and the, the camaraderie to pull you all together, yeah. you know, and the older statesmen and the team, you all find out, and I say, hey, you're too old, mate. But the yeah, older yeah, statesmen am, who's yeah. got the experience, <laughs> they can see that, can't they? Yeah, on these days, it's, it changed a lot. Even I left yeah. seven years ago, but it seems that uh, everything changed now you know yeah. with the social media and, and people that have they have their own things to do and they you know they are on the the phone all the time we are on the phones all the time and answering whatsapp or whatever so on my time there you know uh, the team building uh, you know oh, yeah. uh, doing things dinner and and poker nights i think <laughs> just uh, used to bring the team together you know maybe sometimes you have a 
few players that maybe had a bit of problems, you know, during the week or a fight or a discussion or and that was the time to, you know, put everything aside and just uh, be a team, you know, I think it, that helps on the pitch. And um, and of course, I, I got older in the club and, and, and more responsibility. So I just tried to find ways, you know, to to keep that going. And because the team spirit is really important and, 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 and win points. I mm. think it's really important yeah. and, 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 and win points for the team. Because, you know, if you, if you get on well with a mate, he makes a mistake. You don't even think you go there and, and, and try to recover or cover for them. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that if you don't go, don't get get well uh, with a, a teammate, you don't do that. But it's different. Yeah. That's ten percent more. Yeah. You know, yeah, energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It makes the difference. So, who was the best poker player? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> we had a. I don't know if the best poker player, but I've seen some good players, but some like very strong better. <laughs> like, so, but, bully, the bully, oh, you know, the you know they just uh, intimidate <laughs> by, by the amount. You know, that they they bet. You know, doesn't mean doesn't mean they are very good. They maybe won because they uh, they were yeah, very we aggressive. Them, we but them, uh, I think uh, Simon Minole was quite good. He was uh, he was very calm and very uh, very calm and very thinking guy yeah. so Simon was a was a great uh, great player you, you you couldn't you couldn't read him yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit bullish when I play poker yeah <laughs> all in yeah exactly. all in. So so it doesn't mean you are good no, no, it doesn't mean be you know, you're, you're just the you're just, uh, you're just <laughs> a very it's aggressive it's a great game though isn't it yeah, yeah, you, know, you don't want to play for stupid amounts of money we used yeah. to do that with the Republic of Ireland Jack allowed us to, to, to have poker nights uh, when we were in the World Cups in Europe. And I didn't half help get through the time, you know. And even this stuff now, it's I think it's finished, you know, like yeah, yeah. people will stay on this on social media yeah. now. So even play online, don't they? You know, online or things like this. Mm-hmm. So uh, that that time was was great because you, you, you spent a lot of time with your teammates, mm-hmm. especially in the hotels as well. Yeah, we were talking about Spiders one. He's, he's back at Grammy on isn't he? And they're neighbours apparently. Yeah. Oh are you? Yeah, we are next door neighbours. Uh, oh, so it's incredible because um well he's been there for one year. He's probably leaving now. Oh, but okay. um he, what a player he just scored oh. a hat trick a few days ago and uh, 36 paper, yeah. and he's probably the best player in the league now uh, and uh, I'm happy that he's for my my Grêmio you know uh, yeah. he's playing there and, and hopefully Grêmio can win the league because they are really close and challenging for, for the top and there's only 5-6 games left so Okay. Uh, Fingers so, crossed for that. Yeah. So and you think he'll leave at the end of the season? Is what to, uh, is what they say? They, they he's going to into Miami with, with Messi. Uh, United yeah, with yeah, Messi. Yeah, yeah. I I don't blame him. You know, yeah. but yeah. you know he's done great. People in Brazil are just love him. Yeah. Because we know how he's yeah. he's a winner and, yeah. and he's still going. You know, he's not that young anymore, but he yeah. still makes a difference. Yeah. Well, I've watched Liverpool since. The mid sixties, Roger Hunt loved him, Kevin Keegan, you know, Kenny and you know, Bushy and all that. That one season at Liverpool, I think that's the best season that the main striker ever played for Liverpool. And what I've seen, yeah. that one season you got for yeah. him, it was just it it was, ridiculous. Yeah, he was just you knew that uh, he would do something in the Absolutely game and, and would uh, win the game for, yeah. for the team. So yeah. uh, it was incredible. I yeah. agree with you. He, his season, of course, we had uh, Torres as well doing really good seasons. But that season, 13, 14, yeah, was 13, 14, it? Yeah. 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 it was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It, it's so much ability, but is it the mentality, do you think, that sets him apart? I have no doubt about that... it. Is the hunger to, to win it. You mm. know, he's a... Uh, I see Luis is a street fighter, yeah. you know, and that's uh, so different on the pitch compared to no, off the pitch. No, off the pitch is family guy. He spends most of the time with his kids and his wife drinking his mate and yeah. very relaxed. But when he has to compete, he just uh, switch, yeah. you know, to the, let's say, to a street fighter mode <laughs> and, uh, and he just doesn't accept 
to lose. So I think that, of course, his qualities, we don't need to speak about it, but his mentality to keep it going for many years is not that easy. We shouldn't no, take I, for, for granted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. This is the Old podcast in conjunction with Hotel Anfield <laughs> with Lucas Lee, my good friend, James Pierce, and Peter Schwarzer. man. Close, right? Close. close, very close. Lucas, let's take you back to where it all started off for you growing up in the, the south of Brazil. Um, who were your heroes when you were a kid? And was it were you always completely focused on, on making it as a footballer? Uh, James, to be honest, I was very... I, I, I was... My heroes uh, was Romario, you mm. know, in on, on 1994. Yeah. And Bebeto, you know, yeah. both strikers that we won, we won the, the World Cup. And of course, after that, uh, the Ronaldo's and you know, Ronaldo was a you know a big big hero as well when yeah. I was uh, getting older. I didn't know. I always wanted to to play football. Of course, I come from a very small well, it's small for Brazil. It's like two hundred thousand people mm -hmm. uh, city. Uh, there is not much football in there, so. My father, my father always liked football because I had an uncle. I have a, an uncle that was a player, so I always liked. But I had to move, you know, from my my hometown when I was fourteen. Mm. So I went to São Paulo. It's about a thousand three hundred kilometers from my house to to try to be a football player. I I didn't know that uh, was going to be the case because, like I said, in Brazil, it's so competitive every right? every yeah. day bonds a football player but yeah. uh, i wanted so much and uh, you know slowly i start to to see that maybe i have the talent enough to to be a football player and of course uh, when i was 16 then i i arrived at gremio which uh, then was a big step because i i arrived in a big club it was my club that i used to support as well when i was a kid so uh, and then Everything starts to get uh, you know better and closer to the to the first team. Yeah. Did, did you get? Did you get? Sorry, James. Did you one. get? Uh, ever, you were too young to watch Pelly, wasn't you? Yeah, yeah I didn't See, have the chance to I love, watch Pelly when, yeah. when I was younger. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, in them days, it's off black and white television. Like the, the World Cup in '66, even in Sweden, you know, way earlier on, and I was very young. Uh, the 1971, which was that probably the best team I've ever seen. Uh, when they beat Italy 4 1. Yeah. I love Brazil. I, I, well, you couldn't help but love Pele. Yeah. I, I absolutely. Well, I've, I've just seen clips, Brilliant. you know. Uh, but he was doing in them days what, what people didn't see because we didn't see much on the television. Mm. We wasn't relayed every week, every other day. You only seen little clips of mm. what, what you know, how good he was. And then all these clips have started to come out showing what these players do now, Messi, and what players have done in the past, Ronaldo, and all this. He was doing them. In the 60s, on bad pitches. Yeah. And he was getting kicked a bit. And it was amazing. Something that I, when I see his clips, uh, is how strong physically he was. Yeah. And, you know, many years ago, on, on his time, physically wasn't, you know, the main the main yeah. part of the game. And, yeah. and he was so strong and quick. And his skills yeah, were he amazing. Feels. He could Free kicks, headers, and um, you know both legs. So yeah. now, I, 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 unfortunately, I couldn't. I couldn't see him playing live. I remember my grandfather talking about yeah. you know, um, but of course Romario was the first one I really remember. I was seven when uh, it was the World Cup nineteen ninety four. Yeah. So it was the first World Cup that I really remember you know well, and and and, and it was great because uh, Brazil won it. Yeah. Yeah. So you make the breakthrough at Grêmio. You help them get promoted. You yeah. win the Golden Ball, youngest ever player to win the Golden Ball, given to the best player in the Brazilian league. And you know, names like Zico and Falcao and Caraca had won that before. You get yeah. to the Copa Libertadores final as well. When when do you become aware that big European clubs are are interested? 
in 2006, of course, uh, the year that I I I won the Golden Ball, uh, I, I started to to be aware that uh, good teams in Europe maybe would be interested. <laughs> But of course, you, you never know until the offer is there, it's, it's, um, it's concrete. And, um, and I remember I played the, the Copa America under 20s right. uh, in Paraguay for Brazil and we won it. I was a captain and then after that, that when uh, Liverpool came, I had uh, other possibilities, uh, Atletico Madrid, uh, Inter Milan on that time and uh, and of course when Liverpool came and then uh, through Rafa uh, was a was a big move, you know, for me. Why Liverpool? Listen, I think the history of, of the club, you know, on that time, to be honest, the Spanish and Italian league were the, the best leagues, not the best league, the most viewed leagues in Brazil. You know, Premier League had the Brazilians, but not as many mm. as they have today. Yeah. But uh, Liverpool uh, as a club, you know, the history and uh, so just uh, it was a, it was a dangerous move and, and a very, very hard mm. for me. You know, we all remember how hard it was for me to adapt, but this chance don't don't come very mm. often so i had to take the the challenge and and accept the challenge and and then i just thought when i get there i i see how i i do it and try to you know to be in the team and and and, and be a successful player but it was a looking back it, it was a dangerous move because yeah. it would be easier to go to portugal to go to spain to italy doing that uh, Few years, yeah. which uh, normally the play Brazilian players would do that, and then move to the Premier League afterwards. So, no, but I think at the end it worked. It, it, it's it's not easy. I I I even had it. I was to make it by trade just to be trade, and I only went down to Wales at the age the same age. Yeah, uh, and got the train at Lamb Street Station to Birmingham, Birmingham to Newport, and I, I could have been the other side of the world. I just <laughs> felt unbelievable because first time you'd left, you know, yeah. you're a bold and you. Yeah, come on from Brazil. Over to, to, did your family come with you? At first? No, no. My my well was my girlfriend on the, yeah. the time. Now is my wife. Uh, we we came uh, just us. You know. Did you come with you when you when you settled yeah, here? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's, that, so, that but, but I was twenty years old. So yeah, it's just, uh, no, it's uh, not it's, easy. Uh, uh, just to think maybe you know get a English player and take to Brazil. Oh yeah. Uh, at age of twenty yeah. and and no language. Culture completely different, uh, so it, it was hard. Did but you feel lost? Yeah, I think that's probably the word. Yeah, I felt like you know, between I knew nothing really. You know, I just knew Liverpool is a fantastic club. It's a great chance, but let's go and and, and see yeah. how, how it is. You yeah. know, so I felt a lot of times lost because I couldn't speak the language. That's why Rafa. And I always touch on that. Rafa was really important because, you know, he, he kind of uh, guided me in, in a way that uh, it made me feel a little bit more uh, comfortable and, and protected, I would say. And then in the plays, there was any of the plays helpful at that time? For you? Yeah, of course, Faberelli was the Brazilian, so yeah. he helped me a lot uh, to settle in. And, 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 and a lot of uh, Spanish guys, mm. by the time, the staff, they were all always Spanish, right, yeah. and, but the likes of Arbeloa, Yossi Benayum used mm -hmm. to speak uh, fantastic Spanish as well. Uh, of course, Stevie, yeah. you know, I couldn't understand much, but, <laughs> you know, but, you Don't know. Don't touch on Canada, <laughs> you know, no Don't tell me about it. Uh, but, you know, he's just, uh, his attitude and the way he used to do things, and he was a role model as well from the first day, uh, Sami Hippia. Yeah, you know yeah. what a guy, and uh, so many, many of them, uh, Pepe Reina, mm -hmm. many of them uh, helped me in a way. But I think Fabio, the player, was the, the closest one be yeah. because uh, you know he was Brazilian, he could translate yeah. to me, so it was easy. Yeah. So you say Rafa made you feel quite comfortable. So it was sort of yeah, it was a good good to have him in that moment. At the same time, when you came here, your reputation was to be like a box-to-box -box midfielder and then you arrived and Rafa effectively used yeah. you a bit more uh, like a holding midfielder. Did he communicate that with you straight away that that's, or, or did that sort of trickle in over time? No, I think it was over time. Of course, um, 
uh, on, on, when I when I arrived, it was a fantastic midfield player, the midfield uh, players, uh, Stevie, Xabi, Mascherano, Momo mm. Sissoko. So mm. it wasn't it wasn't easy for me, you know. And I think uh, he watching training sessions and watching games and. Uh, uh, he felt that maybe my way of playing in Brazil was enough to be a box to box player, but in the Premier League it wasn't. So, and because of Steve as well, uh, it, it was hard to, to get minutes in that position. And then I think he found a way to give me minutes uh, in other positions, and, and, and I start to. To understand the role and 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 and, and got used to it and and I think he felt that probably was my best position to play in the Premier League. Because you, when you first come, you didn't come as as, as, as that that player, did you? Yeah, I was you, like more a box to box. You know, the box I, goals. I, I remember I played one game uh, left winger. Yeah, uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, so you know, like, but. That's why Rafa was important because every chance he had, he would have given me minutes and and and, and try to uh, to help me to develop as a player. You know, young players they need to play. You know, otherwise they won't learn and they won't. And and that was the case. You know, I I I I think Rafa tried to give me as much minutes as he could. You know, uh, to to adapt and 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 of course prepare for the future. When when did you start to feel like you really belonged as a Liverpool player? Like when did you feel that things started to click? Yes, to be really honest, on my third season only, you know. Uh, of course, uh, the first couple, first two seasons, uh, I was playing a bit, quite a lot, to be honest, coming on. and But uh, it was very hard for me, you know. Uh, I didn't feel that I, I was part of... Uh, of the future, you know, and I think uh, when Xavi left, mm. I think he, he left a gap, a big gap yeah. to mm. fill. But I saw as an opportunity because let's be honest, if Xavi and these guys were still there, my chance would be less, you know, to play. So when he left, of course, he left a big gap. They brought players in to replace him. But, you know, when a new player comes on, comes in, it's... Um, they maybe comes, you know, with the starting eleven statue status, but uh, you have a chance to to prove uh, the manager, you know, and, yeah. and and then that's when I I really thought, oh, could be my chance here, and 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 the third season I think was the season that I played most for the for the club. Yeah, and in two thousand eight nine, the team goes so close yeah. in in the Premier League. Like there was a few like frustrating home draws. I think that season wasn't there. What What do you think was just maybe lacking that stopped that Benitez team from taking the next step? Yeah, it's it's hard to say because uh, of course you draw games and you lose games. But that eight season, eight eight nine season, it felt to be honest like almost a perfect season. Mm. You know, only well, lost two games. Two yeah, yeah. Games. lost two two, two, two league games. We beat yeah. Man United away, Chelsea away. Yeah. You know, we beat almost every team, and yeah. um, I, if I do a, a comp if I compare, it's like when Liverpool may had a over hundred points here and yeah. finished second. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it was just enough, not enough. You know, United um, had a, a little, was a little bit better and won the league. You know, the 13 14, 14 season. I think it was more a frustration. You yeah. know, the 8 9, I think uh, the team really did really yeah, well. Couldn't and, have done and much they more. Couldn't, yeah. they couldn't win it. Yeah. And and so you go from being part of like amazing nights, like the 4 0 win over Real Madrid, and people thinking that this team is going to win the bigger trophies, to suddenly the ownership issues with Hicks and Gillette, the mm. protests, Rafa leaves, Roy mm. Hodgson comes in. You know, that, that must have been a really difficult period to be a Liverpool player because you've gone from such heights. To suddenly a manager talking about a relegation battle. Yeah, and you could see so many players left, you know. Uh, so it kind of uh, left the club in a uncertain period. Yeah, you yeah. know, with the ownerships and changing of manager. After six months of uh, Hudson, he left as well. So 
It was a little bit uh, uh, complicated mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and and affect <clears throat> on the pitch, you know, because you don't really know which direction the club is going. You don't know which player are coming, which style of play we are going to play. So it, it was very hard, but... You know that's why I'm I'm so pleased when I I see how far the club came. You know the yeah. last five six years because uh, you know players and and the staff and and also the new owners they had to uh, prepare and 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 and, and build this base to to win now. So I think uh, you know when I was part of that moment, you know wasn't. A period that we won a lot, but I think it was a period that we we prepared, you know, for the for the club to to be where where the club is at the moment. Yeah, and obviously FSG by the club, they bring in Kenny Dogleish as manager. Did, did that that felt like it immediately changed the mood mm. around the place? Yeah, well, for me, for was probably the best time of uh, my Liverpool career. Mm. You know, the day you played here, then yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think Kenny, just his presence, you know, mm. um, the way he is, and uh, and I think for the players it was important as well because not one player could uh, could think it would be bigger than Kenny Douglas. So just his presence was enough to give that confidence back. Yeah. You know, we had a fantastic year, six months with him. We got to, we won the League Cup and we got to the FA Cup final uh, against Chelsea. Mm -hmm. So, and for, for myself, it was incredible. He just uh, gave me a responsibility that I needed. You know, I felt that I was really important for the team and and, and, and that was the case. That's why as well, my performance was, was, was really good by that, that time. The, the the influence of Stevie, like obviously you watched Steve over the years, and I must have been unbelievable to play alongside him. Oh yeah, what a what a privilege! No, what a privilege! You know, it's just not to play, one. but uh, just training really with yeah. him, and you know. So I can imagine Steve in training to be you know, exactly what he does in the game. Yeah, exactly. That's, you, the you've level, the level, yeah, you? of course. So if. You know, was for eight season, I think. So no, it's just incredible. You know, I learned a lot, especially you know body shape and pace on the pass, and you know screening and looking, uh, looking after myself as well as a professional. So now he was a role model and and a fantastic guy. You know, uh, people think that Stevie maybe is a he's, he's a quiet guy. You know, but. You know, when when he speaks, everybody listens, and 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 and, and he's he's positive. You know, yeah. that was important, especially for me. And he could see a lot of time that I had difficult moments, and and he was one of the ones that uh, came and said, "Relax, everything's gonna be okay. Keep it, keep it working hard. That uh, things will change around." And then in your arguably best sort of moment of your Liverpool career so far, you tear your ACL. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. How, I mean, I can imagine how that made you feel in the moment, but how hard was it to sort of get yourself back in it physically and mentally afterwards? Yeah, it was really hard because I was playing a fantastic uh, football and mm. uh, I was feeling so confident, so strong and uh, felt like nothing could really happen to me. You know, uh, that, that, that injury came to, to keep me out for a long period. Which was really hard, you know, because you know that's when I felt really my I was getting the respect, you know, from the fans and the, the, uh, in the club, mm -hmm. you know, and then all of a sudden I had a bad injury and um, and just stopped me for a for a while. So it was mentally tough, you know, mm -hmm. because a long injury is is never easy, but uh, but the club was fantastic with me you know i think it gave me everything i could uh, to recover and and that was the case and then I, i got back after seven eight months i had another bad injury kept me out for another three months and then on this time uh brendan took over yeah that's right yeah well that, that season we took we we had on it didn't we with suarez earlier on in the podcast there but uh awesome season wow 
just came out of nowhere. No one oh, expected that. You just, you just read how, how good we were. And you, you, you look at the team, and you know, obviously Sturridge, Sturridge and Suarez up front, and you know, Raheem Sterling in the yeah, end, yeah. and, 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 and it was just and oh, Stevie. Oh, and then to lose it in the, in the manner we did, it was heartbreaking for us all. Imagine the player as well. Yeah, we getting so close. And then yeah, that minute. season uh, because <clears throat> the '89 season, uh, it felt like a perfect season. You know, we couldn't do yeah. more. But this 13 14 season, he felt that we we lost a little bit. Uh, we way. left, mm. you know, we slipped, mm. you know, because we were a very offensive team and yeah, we no. used to score a lot of goals. But yeah. I think we couldn't really find the balance mm. by scoring a lot of goals and conceding less goals. And, yeah. and that's what cost us, I think, the league, really. The Chelsea you know, game was a killer one. Uh, of know. course, the, yeah. the Chelsea game is the one that we all think, oh... There's, there's a couple of ones in between where it cost. But, but the Chelsea one, we look back at it now, we think, we, we were going... And at the time, I was saying, doing the commentary, and I was saying, yeah, go on. We, we were just slapping teams. Yeah. And, you know, just like, go on. Well, you needed the, the, yeah. need the draw. That was the mistake. I think that was the mistake. The, 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 way, the way the team approached... Uh, like a bit arrogant, you know. Yeah, yeah. And any anyone that comes here, we like the Arsenal game. Twenty minutes, three nil. Yeah, came down. Yeah. You know, and that Chelsea game, the draw was enough. And yeah. we know Mourinho. Yeah. How he is, you yeah, know. Yeah. He came to Anfield not to lose the game. Absolutely. You know, and 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 of course the episode that happened, yeah. uh, it came against us. But the draw would be enough. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and then would have win two two games, Palace and Newcastle. We would uh, have won the league. Yeah. So, a lack of a little bit of experience, Absolutely. Uh, of yeah. course. But I understand as well because the excitement was so big and, and it's a favorite point, uh, it? just uh, the team that would have won the league. You know, the first one would be in the history forever of the club. So it kind of uh, maybe didn't help. Yeah, you know, but. It is what it is. We just yeah. uh, we learn and and hopefully we we got the trophy a few years later. Yeah, and then obviously twenty fifteen, Jurgen takes over from from Brendan. How how did things change and what did, could you see even in those early days that that Jurgen was building something special? Yeah, you could uh, smell it and you could see it. You know, not just because what he's done at Dortmund, but uh, just the way he is, just the way he manages. You know, he's a Jurgen is a very positive guy. You know, he tries always tries to find the positive in a defeat. Mm -hmm. You know, and we could see that uh, he was he, he was starting to build something special. You know, it's just. Um, He's just uh, his man management is, is I think is the best I ever had, you know, and um, and we could see he would change a lot, you know, even players and the way of playing, and uh, and it, it happened really. He had a great impact the first year because we got two finals, yeah. we lost the, both finals, but we got there, and uh, so you could uh, you could sense that something was really happening there. And ten years at Liverpool, how how difficult a decision was it then? to move on in, in 2017? Uh, James, to be honest, uh, it wasn't difficult because, uh, of course, I have a, still a year left on my contract, and uh, but I could see that I was losing, you know, the space, you know, I I was playing less and less mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of the day, I was only 30 years old. So uh, I wanted to, you know, be involved in more games and more minutes and even knowing that something special was coming, you know, but I was the la getting to my last year contract. I felt that probably I wouldn't sign a new deal, you mm. know, because things were changing and, and, and that's why I, I appreciate so much Jurgen because we have a, we had a very honest talk, you know, and, and I think at the end it was, it was good for, both, you know, for the club, for myself, because I had an opportunity to go to Italy. It was a country that I wanted as well to experience. And uh, and then I moved, you know. So it's always hard to leave a club like Liverpool. But in that moment, I, I thought just I, I didn't have much more to offer for the team, you know. So I think it was a, a good move for both. Mm. 
Well, this is the Aldo Meets podcast again with Lucas Lever, James Pease, and Peter Schweizman. Sh- 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 <laughs> <laughs> So Lucas, you, you moved to Lazio in the summer of 2017. Was it you, you wanted to test yourself in Italy, or did you have a chance to go to Spain, or, or, or what happened? Was that what the, that no, was the one? No, I had a few requests, but Lazio was the one that came in straight away, and uh, it was actually the day before uh, Liverpool left uh, for for the preseason tour. Mm-hmm. So. I got sat with Jürgen and said, listen, what are we going to do here? You know, and then I said, listen, Lazio is, is a good club. They they are building a, a great team and, uh, and and it's Rome. It's a great city. He said to your family. So, you know, you helped me a lot in two years and, and, and I kept you here a few times when you had uh, options to leave. And, and now it's on you, you know, if you want to go take this challenge and... Then I accepted because Italy was, a, I think, on the stage of my career, was a perfect suit for me. Mm-hmm. You know, the way I was playing and uh, and the club and, and the city. So, yeah, I accepted the challenge and then I moved to to, to Lazio. And uh, to be honest, it was a, was a great move for me. I played... Well, uh, I, I didn't realize you'd done so much, you know, yeah. until, until James wrote <clears throat> it all down. Yeah. When you went there, did... Did he take you as like um, he wants you? Did you have young players then? And actually, wanted experience because I don't know what went on. But you, to it was a mix. Yeah, it was a mix. But of course, they they saw the Lucas Billia was the their captain, mm. and uh, they wanted someone for good name to replace. And and when I got there, it was a mix of a young and, and older player, experienced player. But they they were they were trying to to go into the next level in the club. You know, the club uh, played uh, many years in the Europa League and they, their their aim was to be back in the Champions League. And and, and we ended up w- winning two, two yeah. Italian Super Cup and the Coppa Italia. Yeah. So in, I, I, in the four years that I stayed under Simone Inzaghi, and of again, course, and again you won the fans play of the year, which, which is yeah, nice. That's not really for two nice. years, yeah, yeah two for two years, years in a row. So. No, it was a, a great experience, and and I won three three titles there, which uh, was yeah. great. And we got back as well to the Champions League, which uh, was the the big uh, target for the club. And you had Pepe Reina as a as a teammate and yeah. a neighbor neighbor there during your um, time there. Unbelievable, you know. <laughs> I Pepe was at uh, AC Milan. You know, he was a second goalkeeper at AC Milan, and. And then when I heard that he was coming, you know, they, they asked me, oh, how is Pep? I said, oh, just, uh, just bring him, you know, because <laughs> he's an amazing goalkeeper, but also, you know, Pepe is just a leader yeah, and a yeah, great lad. And, you know, he just uh, likes to organize things as well for, for the lads and dinner and parties, things like this. So now it was fantastic to meet him again. And, and we got really close there because our families were very close and it's probably one of the, my best friends now uh, from football. Did he have any po- Did you bring poker nights over to Rome? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, he liked poker, didn't not, he? Not really poker, but uh, we, we brought all the, all the games. Pepe is, uh, yeah. is uh, just a competitive yeah. guy and uh, Parches, have you heard about it? Parches is a iPad game that uh, I, I didn't play, but Pepe was crazy about it, and all the guys. <laughs> oh, jeez, so, yeah. is, is that a Brazilian thing? No, or a Spanish I think it's Spanish thing. thing but, but for sure, you you know, maybe in English oh, is another. That, like, yeah? uh, it could be Ludo. Okay, oh, okay. Ludo, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah something like this. So yeah, Pepe is a great guy. <laughs> and and there was a lovely symmetry to your career. The fact that at the start you get Grêmio promoted, and then at the end, fifteen years after leaving, you go back and help them get promoted again. 
Yeah, wow. I always wanted to retire at, uh, at Grêmio. You know, my plan when I left was to stay 12 in years, 12 years in Europe, play three years, 35 retired. And of course, it took a bit longer. I stayed 15 years in Europe and then unfortunately the game uh, the Grêmio went uh, went to the second division uh, the year before and then you know my, my contract ran out uh, at Lazio and then I oof, should I make this move now because you know it was a, a, another dangerous move you know uh, but um, but yeah I wanted to do that and then I managed to go back to the club to Grêmio from my former club and um, and help and help the team to to get promoted again because in 2005 the, mm. uh, it was the case I was 18 was my first season and then after my last season was uh, helping as well to to get promoted that's, again that's a bit of a dream that not it that, that, that's a great story that's really yeah you know it's, it's um, you know, you, uh, people when you say that like in a comic book or whatever it doesn't yeah. really happen but to make it happen no help make it happen yeah. you and, know you can, when and, you're older you look back at that with a lot yeah, of pride yeah of course and, and the funny thing was football is incredible no? uh, we played uh, in 2005 after you have to look for this game it was uh, we won this game to get promoted 2005 with four men down we got four men sent oh. off and, and and we managed it was a penalty against us a penalty against Grêmio and the guy missed the penalty and after two minutes we scored the goal Anderson from Man United he scored a goal and we played for 15 minutes with four men down <laughs> And we managed the game. What, what formation? Uh, yeah, it was like 4-2. Uh, 4-2. Uh, uh, that's it. I was left back. You know. But look. Uh, I'm looking at that. And, uh, and, and we managed to get promoted. Wow. So it was my first season. And then it was in a stadium. It calls Aflitos. Uh, and and actually there is a DVD of this this yes, tour yeah. and it calls the Battle of Aflitos and then I go back <laughs> now and uh, the game we got promoted and uh, now in last year it was in the same stadium wow. we got That's promoted uh, again That's against nice. the same team <laughs> and 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 I scored a goal we won <laughs> we won we won three nil and I scored one goal so. You know, it was amazing. You know, of course, things happen after, but uh, I, I think it, it fulfilled my 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 dream to to help the my club as well to get back to the. I know also that that's my again to to have twenty four caps for the great Brazil. Yeah, you know the best team that's yeah. ever been on the planet. You know, we know that. Yeah. You know that uh, you look back and the sense of massive proud. Big yeah, proud, proud was big that, proud, man. big proud. Of course, um, twenty four caps. It doesn't seems a lot but for brazil it's yes, it's quite hard and, and yeah. it's 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 a lot of course uh, when i got the acl injury was when i was starting for brazil mm -hmm. you know i was playing every game for liverpool i was playing every game for brazil and then of course the injury it kept me out for one year and then i managed to get back in the squad but then never really had the chance to to continue in the mm -hmm. team so so that period of uh, two three years that uh, I played uh, for for Liverpool and also for Brazil was when I did uh, the twenty four caps. So yeah. it was amazing. I missed out uh, uh, two World Cups. You know, I was on the waiting list, which was mm -hmm. hard to take. But you know, it's never easy to make yeah. a squad for Brazil. And you played with a couple of absolutely iconic names in your in your time in the Brazilian national team. Who would have been like your most iconic, most favorite player that you played yeah, well, with? I, yeah, so many good players. It's unbelievable. Go, yeah. unbelievable. You can it's go, not quite Germany, but you, it's you, very good. Yeah, <laughs> you you can go back and from the defense to the, the attack, uh, you just could pick uh, any player. But I think the one that stands out is Ronaldinho for sure. Yeah. You know, I, I had a chance to play with him when I was at Grêmio was when I my first uh, call to the national team and he was at Barcelona. So it was his best moment. So yeah, he was in another level. He was a world class player and, and was, a, uh, was the player that uh, I just uh, think was the best one in the national team, yes.
And just before we, we, we go on to this famous quiz that we've well, got <laughs> six questions you've got in the quiz. Six times. Six times. We've obviously won six times the European Cup. More than any. Answer. Twice as much more than any <laughs> other England, England club. Like, but, but yeah. Um, we've been heavily linked with the Brazilian players. You know, Andre, Fluminense. Yeah. Where do you think that lies at the moment? Because from what I've seen, a lot of good things about him. I've not seen an awful lot of him, I have to say. But yeah. What's your take on it? He's a very good player, John. Yeah. He's, um, he's the, I would say he's the new modern number six. Yeah. You know, he's not very big, but he's very strong. He just won the Copa Libertadores, that, yeah. you know, with Fluminense. He's, he's in the national team as well. Fantastic talent, mm. you know. Um, he could... Be a good addition, mm. of course, for for Liverpool because you know it's a position that uh, it's really important for the team and yeah. and, and and of course uh, new players come came in like the Endo, uh, but uh, you never know how yeah. how these yeah. boys will do. You know, I I always. I'm always very careful because I know how difficult it is to move from Brazil. Of course, it's coming in a different moment. You know, I think Brazilian players now are better prepared to come to the Premier League than when it was my time. So it's a fantastic player. It, it depends now how if the club and, and the manager yeah. feels that his way of playing yeah. would fit the way of a Liverpool play. So well, he's, a, he's a good player, very good player. And, and the, 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 the press in Brazil... Because Man City are linked with him. Has anything come out over that? Or, no, or just, no. Just, to be, just paper talk. To be honest, yes. I haven't seen anything about that. I just saw about uh, Liverpool, you know. So, let's see. Let's hope uh, yeah. if uh, if it's to happen, uh, it's uh, for Liverpool. Because you want to keep this Brazilian influence. Brazil, yeah, we lost uh, quite a few Brazilians now. Yeah. So, <laughs> we just need to fill up with uh, a few more Samba players. <laughs> Absolutely, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. James, so... Right, quiz time. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. I know, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Pleasure. Great to see you, as always. Um, but I want you to do well on this quiz, so don't fuck it up. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell, lads. <laughs> right. right. Number one. You made your Liverpool debut in a Champions League qualifier yeah. at Anfield in August 2007. Who were the opponents that night? Toulouse. Oh. Correct. Number two. Which midfielder did you replace when you came off the bench that night? Momo Sissoko. Correct. Already better than Steve Nicol. <laughs> this, this is better than anyone. This is the, you scored your first goal for Liverpool in the FA Cup, January 2008. Who were the opponents? Yeah. Can I uh, I haven't Waterloo. Wow. Oh, I, didn't well, think you I don't have, uh, remember uh, the, I don't yeah. have Alzheimer. They went, <laughs> <laughs> Still. They, they went 2-0 up. I was like, yeah. they, they went 2-0 yeah, up they after went, 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Actually, it was the 2-1 goal, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They went, they went ahead twice, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, that's what it was. I knew it was. What a shot. We won about 5-2 in the end. It was, yeah, it was, it was more or less the same shot I had against Everton. <laughs> <laughs> um, the before, you were part of that Benitez team, as we talked about earlier, that went close to winning the Premier League in 2008-9. How many points did Liverpool finish behind oh, Man United? That's the, ah, the points. I think it was three points. Two points? Four. It's oh, unlucky. It's unlucky. Yeah, yeah. Close. Close, close, um, close. Against which team did you make your final Liverpool appearance in May 2017? I, I, if I'm not wrong, it was Middlesbrough. Correct. Yeah. Four out of five. Only one South American player has ever played more games for Liverpool than your total of 346. Who is it? Yeah, I, I think it's probably Bobby. Correct, well, three, yeah. six, two. Yeah. Five, five, nine, six. Well, We've got a new leader on the lead. Maybe, <laughs> maybe in five years' time, uh, I won't remember. But, you know, it's still fresh. It's still fresh. You didn't, you didn't it's leave the name, mate, by far. It's the best thing we've ever done. Yeah. Uh, thanks again, Paul. Guys, thanks. thank you very much. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Brilliant. Lucas, thank you, mate. Great to have you on. See you soon. Yeah, brilliant, Paul.